attention, Percival. B flat. Piano was my thing. <laughs> Rooster preferred singing and gambling. Collect my money, pay up. We were from two totally different sides of the track with one common ground, music. Great film. Thank, Thank you. Something we're not used to seeing you. We're used to seeing you in the music industry and Outkast. So how did this come about? Um, sit down with Brian Barber, you know, and we, we kick it out. And so after Speaker Box and Love Below, the success of it, I guess they gave us the opportunity to actually get something made. Because I guess the um, studios or HBO felt like, okay, they have an audience. And at that point, uh, Brian, he took it and wrote a great script. And next thing you know, we're in North Carolina shooting this music. And that's what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Angel. <laughs> Wild, and it's sort of a mix of many genres. You know, it's a drama, it's a comedy, it's a musical, it's a love story, it's a crime story. And somehow, Brian Barber, in his genius, was able to thread all of them together to make a great film. So I wanted to create a film that um, I would be entertained by, that had action and comedy and, and drama. Uh, and but yet, yeah, and love story, a great love story. Um, and the musical aspect takes it to a whole nother place. The story is about two uh, childhood friends, and they're in a small town in Idlewild, Georgia, uh, which is a fictitious town. And um, I play Rooster, and Rooster is like the family guy, and he plays at this club where he's the premier performer. Woo! Go ahead! Party up in here! Woo! Stir it up! Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, Rooster! And then Percival is like the son of a mortician, which is his best friend since they were small. And um, there are turn events that happen and, you know, some bad guys come in and a lot of responsibility is thrust upon Rooster and Percival has decisions he's got, he's got to make. And, you know, it's about following your dreams. This is my house! Give me that book. Give it to me! Just trying to show up. I don't give a damn what you're trying. You keep that behavior down at that club. Mr. Jenkins, I think Now you just... take this floozy out of here right now. Get her out! Now! Angel is this diva that comes in from out of town. She's sort of this semi-celebrity from St. Louis. And she comes to town with a secret. And she comes off as this very fabulous woman, you know, seems very secure and confident in herself. But in truth, she's really just this fragile little girl. And she meets Andre 3000's character, um, Percival. And through their relationship, he helps bring the best out of her. And he sees that little girl and he sort of nurtures it. So. You play piano and write songs. Yeah, I play a little bit just to pass the time. That's a creepy call. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be called dead in that one. <laughs> That's funny. You're a cute piano player. Was this kind of like a dream project for you because it did incorporate music and dancing and, and acting as well? Yeah, it was I mean, It was fun because it was another time period, you know. I mean, it would have been a whole other thing if it was now. You know, that would still be fun, but I think um, it put you in a whole other world. You had to act a certain way. You had to have a certain poise about it. You had to sit up straight. And I think that made it magical because you got to live in a whole other world and you got to play a different character, even though Brian knew us, you know, so the characters were kind of based on I guess the extremes of what he knows about us. But uh, we got to be something else.